Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in quantitative aspects of chemical change. In this lesson we're going to be learning about percentage yield. But what is percentage yield? Well, your yield is what you get out of a reaction. Okay, so it's the amount of product you have. The percentage yield tells you how efficient your reaction is. So if you have a high percentage yield, it means that your reaction is very efficient. Whereas if you have a low yield, it means that it's bad for industry because the whole point is that you're trying to use your chemical reaction to make a product which then you can sell. Okay, And if you're getting a low yield, it means you're getting very little product for your reactants, which means that you're not going to be able to sell. So that's why this is important. So how do we work it out? It can be calculated as follows. Percentage yield equals the actual yield over theoretical yield times by 100 to get the percentage, okay? So it's what we actually get out divided by a theoretical yield, okay? And that is how we work out whether or not we have an effective reaction. So let's look at an example. It says sulfuric acid, which is sulfuric HJSO4, reacts with ammonia NH3 to produce the fertilizer ammonium sulfate NH42SO4 according to the following equation. Okay, and it says factory work, to work, work carries out the above reaction using 2 kilograms of sulfuric acid, 1 kilogram ammonia, and gets out 2.5 kilograms of ammonium sulfate. And it says what is the percentage yield of this reaction? So remember what did we say? We said the percentage yield was actually what? It was the actual yield, yield over the theoretical yield, okay, times by 100 over 1. So the actual yield is how much you actually get out and the theoretical yield is basically based on this formula. It's saying if we had one mole of this and two moles of that we should have got one mole out. So if I had two moles of this and four moles of that I should get two moles out, okay. So what do we need to do? The first thing we need to do is find the limiting reagent. Now grade 11s remember that we've already done two lessons on limiting reagents and this is why it's important. If we don't work out which one is going to be used up first, we are not going to be able to work out the theoretical yield. Secondly, we need to determine the theoretical yield and then finally determine the percentage yield. So let's get going. Firstly, they tell us we've got two kilograms of sulfuric acid, two kilograms of sulfuric acid. So remember when we are doing chemical reactions and we always talk about moles, not mass, okay? So we need to convert this amount, the two kilograms, and the one kilogram of ammonia into moles. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. We've got the mass, it's two kilograms. So we have to work out the molar mass of sulfuric acids, the molar mass of H2SO4. So we're going to refer to our periodic table. So hydrogen, I'm going to use just the whole numbers in this case just to make it easier for us. So hydrogen is just going to be one, sulfur is 32, and oxygen we know is 16. Okay, so the molar mass of this is going to be two times one, plus 32 plus 4 times 16 and we're going to whip out our calculator and we're going to go okay fine and we're going to go 2 plus 32 plus bracket 4 times 16 bracket equals and that becomes 98 so that is 98 so the molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98 grams per mole. So the number of moles is mass, which is 2 kilograms. But what's wrong with that number? That has to be in grams. That's so 2,000 grams of sulfuric acid. So it's 2,000 divided by 98, which equals what? So we go 2, 1, 2, 3, divided by 98. And it gives us 20.4. Four, one. We're rounding off to two decimal places. It's 20.41 moles of H2SO4. Okay, so now we've worked out the H2SO4. Now we need to work out how many moles of ammonia we actually have. So let's change color. 
Okay, because remember we are still working out which of these two is a limiting reagent. In other words, which of these two are going to be used at first, okay? So again, we've got the molar mass of ammonia, which equals, if we go, nitrogen is 14, and hydrogen is again 1. So number of ma molar, ma molar mass of um, ammonia is 14 plus 3 times 1, which equals 17 grams per mole. So therefore, the number of moles of ammonia, let's make that N, H3, is the mass. And what's wrong with a the kilogram then? It has to be in grams. It's 1,000 grams. So it's 1,000 over 17, the molar mass, which is, and again, need the calculator. So it's 1, 1, 2, 3 divided by 17, which gives you 58.82. So that gives us 58.82 moles. So what does that tell us? That tells us that we've been given 20.41 moles of sulfuric acid, and we've been given 58.82 moles of ammonia. But let's look at those ratios. Okay, let's look at the ratio. So we've got sulfuric acid and ammonia. So we've got one mole of H2SO4 and it needs two moles of ammonia. Okay, so if we use up all of our sulfuric acid we have, which is 20.41 moles, then do you agree you need 40.82 moles of ammonia? Okay, but we've got way more than 40.82, 40, 40 we've got 58.82. So if we use up all of our sulfuric acid, we'll still have a little bit of ammonia left. We'll have 18 moles of ammonia left. So therefore, our sulfuric acid, this dude here, is our limiting reagent. He's the one that's going to be used up first. So here's the one that we're going to use to find out how many moles of ammonia we're going to form. Right. Okay, so again, to change color, having fun with these colors, one mole of H2SO4 forms one mole of ammonium sulfate, right? But we don't have one mole, we've got 20.4 moles, so 20.41 moles of H2SO4 is going to give us 20.41 moles of ammonium to sulfate. Okay, and why is this important? This is important because we've worked out the limiting reagent over here, and now what we're doing is we're going to work out what is our theoretical yield. Okay, the actual yield they've given us is 2.5 kilograms. Okay, it's 2,500 grams. We want the theoretical yield, so we need to know how much we actually theoretically should get out. And theoretically, if we had 20.41 moles of sulfuric acid, which we do, then we should get out 20.41 moles of ammonium sulfate. But do you see that this dude here is in grams or kilograms, whichever you prefer? Okay, and this is in moles. So we have to convert this back. So what do we need to do? We need to work out the molar mass of ammonium sulfate. So the molar mass of ammonium sulfate, the molar mass of ammonium sulfate, which is NH4 to SO4 is going to be big bracket. Nitrogen is 14 plus hydrogen, which is 1 times by 4. Okay, and we have to double that. Plus sulfur, which is 32, plus 4 times 16 for the oxygen. Okay, so the molar mass for that is going to be, let's get our calculator out. It's 14 plus 4 equals times 2 equals plus 32 plus bracket 4 times 16 close bracket equals and that becomes 132. 132. So the molar mass of this is 132. So again, we're going to go back to this formula here. 
But this time we've got the number of moles and we've got the molar mass, so we're going to work out the mass, the theoretical yield in kilograms or grams. So the mass is equal to 20.41 times 132. And if we times that by 20.41, we get 2694.12. 2,694.12 grams. So that there is our theoretical yield. So we can put it in here, so it's 2694.12. So therefore our percentage yield, if I pop it in my calculator, is going to be, hmm, move it over here, 2,500 divided by 2694.12 times by 100 and that's 92.79 that's 92.79 percent so grade 11s that's actually a very high yield so we're doing very well with that we're getting out a lot of ammonium sulfate so we're going to be able to sell that make lots of money Okay, so that might have seemed a little bit overwhelming. So we're going to do one more example just to make sure that you guys do understand exactly what to do. Okay, so let's do another example. So it says, when electric current is passed through sodium chloride solution, sodium hydroxide can be produced according to the following equation. So we've got sodium chloride plus water goes to chlorine plus hydrogen plus sodium hydroxide. Okay. A chemist carries out the above reaction using 4 kilograms of sodium chloride and 3 kilograms of water. And the chemist finds that they get 1.8 kilograms of sodium hydroxide. What is the percentage yield? Okay, so let's go through those three steps again that we have to do. First, we need to find the limiting reagent. Okay, then we determine the theoretical yield and then we determine the percentage yield. Okay, nice and easy. So let's do that again. So, to find the limiting reagent, we have to find the number of moles of sodium chloride and the number of moles of water. And I don't really like this color, so let's just change it. I don't know. Let's go to purple. So, the number of moles of NaCl equals the mass over the molar mass, right? Molar mass. So again, we need to work out the molar mass of NaCl. So we're going to find that using our periodic table. So we've got 23 is for sodium and 35.45 is chlorine. So this is equal to 23 plus 35.45. And we're going to get our calculator out. And we say, okay, fine. 23 plus 35.45. And that's 58.45, which equals 58.45. So the mass of sodium chloride we're given is 4 kilograms, which we know should be changed to 4,000 grams. So it's 4,000 divided by 58. 0.45 grams per mole and what do we have? So we got 4,000 divided by 58.45 equals 73.46 moles. 73.46 moles. Right, so we have 73.46 moles of sodium chloride. Now let's look at how much water they used in the reaction. So the water, okay? So the molar mass of water is pretty easy. H2O is going to be 2 plus 16, which equals 18. The number of moles is a mass, and again, it's 3 kilograms, which needs to be changed to 3,000. So it's 3,000 divided by 18, which equals 3,000, 1, 2, 3, divided by 18 equals 166.67, wow, 166.67 moles. So now we need to look at the mole ratio, 
Okay. So again, let's just change color so we can see what we're doing. So we've got two moles of NaCl. React with one mole of H2O. Okay. But we have got 73.46 moles of NaCl. If we do the ratio of 2 to 1, okay, then that's going to be half that. Okay, so we can only use up, I don't know, 36 or so moles of this. Okay, if we do it the other way and we say, oh, we've got 166.67 moles, we'd need double that. So therefore, the limiting reagent is going to be this. Because if we use up all of our 73.46, if we use up all of our 73.46 moles of sodium chloride, 73.46, and we divide it by 2, we are only going to use up 36.73 moles of our water. We're only going to use up 36.73 moles of our water. So once we've used up all of this, we've still got tons of water left, okay? So therefore, the sodium chloride is our limiting reagent. We're going to use that up first, okay? So therefore, we need to look at the sodium chloride's number of moles and use that to work out how much we're going to get out of the sodium hydroxide. So two moles of sodium chloride theoretically gives us two moles of sodium hydroxide right so we don't have two moles we've got 73.46 moles of sodium chloride we've got 73.46 moles which means we're going to end up with 73.46 moles of our sodium hydroxide okay so now do you agree we've worked out our limiting reagent We've, we're now going to work out what is our actual yield, well, our theoretical yield. We've got our actual yield. Remember, percentage yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times by 100 over 1 to get the percentage. And we've got the actual yield. They've got 1.8 kilograms, 1,800 grams. So now we're working out our theoretical yield. So to get that, we've got the number of moles. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. We've got the number of moles. We need to use the molar mass to get the mass. Okay. So we know that the molar mass of sodium hydroxide equals the molar mass of sodium, which we know is 23, plus oxygen, which is 16, plus hydrogen, which is 1. When we're going to get out our calculators, just because we can, should be 40, I think, but let's just have a look. 23 plus 16 plus 1 is 40. There we go. It's 40. Therefore, therefore, the mass is going to be 73.46 times by 40, which is times by 73.46, 2938.4 grams. So the theoretical yield, the theoretical yield, the one that we should get out is 2938.4. Actual yield is 1800. So if we work this out, it's 1800 divided by 2938.4. Okay. And we say, right, let's work this out. Let's clear this so we can just see what we're doing. We're doing 1800 divided by 2938.4 equals 0 0.61, but remember we need to times it by 100 to get it to percentage. So that's 61.26. That equals 61.26%, which is still a pretty high yield, okay? Not as high as the 90 odd that we got last example, but it is still a pretty good yield. And that grade 11 is how you work out percentage yield. So 
again what I would suggest you do is you go through this video again you stop at the beginning of a question you try and work it out for yourself and then follow through and then go do the questions in the assessment to make sure you understand the section perfectly have a great day